So <laughs> Ephesians 4.29 really does spell out for Christians how we should treat one another. Uh, many people limit it to saying, well, you know what, that's, that, that verse just doesn't necessarily apply to marriage. But the truth is, Ephesians 4.29 lays out the kind of language, the kind of love that we should show our spouse. It gives us like practical application on how we should treat them. And as we look at how we get along during Christmas time, how we get along with extended family, in-laws. One of the first things we must realize is we must have a game plan. We must first communicate with one another. We can't expect as a husband and wife to not communicate throughout the year and to continually have fusses and fights that are never resolved and then come together with our in-laws thinking that all of a sudden everything's just going to be put on hold for the next two to three days, in some cases two to three hours if you last that long. But the truth is we have to have that game plan. Where does that come from? It comes from first and foremost communications. Communications in our marriage isn't an option. It's a requirement that we, we often overlook for different reasons. Some overlook it for the sake of avoiding conflict. Some overlook it at the fact that they have given up in their marriage, that they can never communicate their feelings in their heart with one another. I'm here to tell you today as a husband and wife, before you get to the in-law's house, before you get to that place of con conflict and strife, no matter what your in-law's attitudes may be, take time as a husband and wife to be on the same page, to communicate the boundaries and expectations you have for each other and for your family so that it is not a shock and it is not a constant battle once you arrive at your in-laws homes. You may be wondering how exactly you apply what I'm talking about. Many times you may hear something or a little tip and uh, you're sitting there going, you know what, that did me a whole lot of good because I don't know how to apply it in my marriage. I don't know how to apply it at Christmas time. So how can you learn? If we look at Ephesians 4.29 it says this, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth but only such as is good for building up as it fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. It's not your job to be a whipping post this Christmas season. As you arrive at your in-laws' homes, or as, at your, as your in-laws are coming to your homes, make a list of the ways you can show grace to those who hear the words that come out of your mouth. And Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.